I'm secretly happy that James is here to present this part of the research because I'm one of those salt shaker people. I love salt. People laugh at me and they say that I should walk around with a salt lick like oh, a we rabbit. All do. We I all mean, salt. it's so yummy. And so I know that recently <laughs> so we've yummy. had this so good, it makes food so good. And so, anyway, I, all I'm saying is it's interesting to see the debate, it's interesting to see the other side and to kind of see what other components of these studies are really driving the research. And so I, I I'm comforted that. by the fact that if I'm eating less processed foods, maybe I can salt so my food. Yeah, at Goldberg, yeah. there's, there, there's no question the association of salt and hypertension <laughs> in a certain group of people. Well, I want to point out something to everyone here. The salt from the salt shaker represents only about 5% of our salt intake. 75% of the sodium that we take in in our bodies is determined by the food industry and restaurant and processed foods. Mm. And if you just cut back and tell them in the restaurant to put salt, uh, the sauce on the side, you can actually reduce the sodium in your meal and cutting back on processed foods. Dr. Goldberg, we know how you stand, but James, so what are you telling us? What, well, what, I'm telling people what, what that. What's the take home for us in terms of the salt that we're, that, that we're there's eating? There's so many disease states that cause salt deficiency. <clears throat> okay, there's 20 million Americans with um, sleep apnea and they don't know it, and they lose twice the amount of salt in their urine at night. That's why they're waking up at night peeing all the time. They're getting flushed out of salt. There's 20 million Americans with hypothyroidism, which causes salt deficiency. There's millions of people with inflammatory bowel disease where they don't absorb salt well. I treat patients with celiac disease, um, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, and they're, they're cramping and they're having all these issues and fixed when they up their salt intake. And so what I'm saying is, is salt is an essential mineral and your body controls its intake and we should be listening to those, those cravings. And when you don't, that can lead to serious negative health consequences. We gotta be very careful here. And, and the reason is because I actually agree with some of what both of you are saying. Mm -hmm. I think we have been way too fearful of, okay, putting a little table salt on your dinner, for most of us, unless your cardiologist tells you not to, is fine, more than fine. And so being afraid of the salt shaker to the point where you throw it away, there are, there, I've told people, you get iodine in table salt, and if someone's low on iodine, okay, it's a good source for it. But, but I do worry that people are going to get confused here because there's such a big difference. If only 5% of our salt is coming from table salt and 95% is coming from these processed meals, people are gonna start reading these processed meals and be like, oh, James told me it's all good even though this is you know, 150% of my sodium for the day, I'm gonna get three of these. No. So that, that's where the debate, because to me yeah. it seems like too much is bad, too little is bad. And in, in my book, what I say is people need to eat real food and consume real salts. And I'm not advocating okay. eating processed food. And salt allows people to eat real food. My kids, they're not gonna eat their bitter vegetables, nuts, seeds without salt on it. So use salt as the gateway to eating healthy and exercising more. Love What's that. healthier than that? And, and I think, Dr. Goldberg, would you agree, like eat real foods? You need to eat real foods because in fact, in one of the diets that we propose to people to eat is the DASH diet which is a Mediterranean style diet. It's low in meats, sweets, processed foods, and has healthy fats. We're not telling people to eliminate nutrients, particular nutrients from food groups. We want people to eat healthy amounts of nutrients from all food groups. I'm a cardiologist, I take care of people. And in fact, when you take in a high salt diet, you bring more fluid into your blood, blood vessels. So it's like turning up a water hose full force with high pressure. You're increasing the pressure in your arteries and damaging them because then they're gonna build, have that waxy buildup of cholesterol leading to a heart attack. Salt does not cause an overretention of water. The kidneys will just get rid of any salt it doesn't need. What my book shows is that the reduction in blood pressure isn't even necessarily a good thing. You're just dehydrating the person. Almost every single study shows that a low salt diet significantly increases heart rate. It increases the artery stiffening hormones, which is why almost all the studies show that if you're not getting enough of this essential mineral, you're at the highest risk of heart disease and early death. And well, what I find interesting shows is, is, is when you look at all the studies, mm -hmm. is the very low salt diets and the very high salt diets both have increased risk. Of, but the risk is much higher at the but, lower end. But why, so my whole takeaway would just be, talk with your doctor. We are, every one of us is an individual. We have unique physiology. This debate is not going to end anytime soon. But I always say, be, be cautious with yeah. these things because you don't want to just start chugging salt and then you go see Dr. Goldberg 
and, you know, <laughs> and your blood pressure's through the roof and you're having a heart attack. You just gotta be aware. Takeaway is this is an important debate that's not going away anytime soon. I wanna thank both of you so much for presenting your sides of it.